Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing cardiac muscle contraction. Okay, so now what we want to discuss is one other aspect of what the calcium signal is going to do. And then we also want to discuss how you achieve relaxation. So we've discussed how the calcium signal is going to cause the sarcomeres within the cardiomyocyte to start contracting, which is going to cause the whole cardiomyocyte to start contracting in length. Now there's another thing that the calcium signal does, and that is that it acts on the mitochondria within the uh, cardiomyocyte. So if this is a mitochondria here, remember mitochondria have these two membranes, uh, an outer membrane and an inner membrane, okay? And they have these invaginations of the inner membrane inwards, which are known as cristae. So this is a cristae, or a crista, uh, a crista would be the singular. Okay, and basically what's going to happen is that when the calcium goes up in the cytoplasm, it's also going to lead to calcium going up in the matrix of the mitochondria, which is this space within the center of the mitochondria. So this is the mitochondrial matrix. So calcium will go up within the mitochondrial matrix. And the effect of that calcium going up in the mitochondrial matrix is that the rate of respiration is going to go up. So ATP production is going to go up. And then you're going to need that because ATP is required in this cross-bridge cycling process. You're hydrolyzing it in order to return the myosin heads to their original conformation. So you do need to increase ATP production in response to uh, contraction. And that's how the calcium signal leads to it. Right, okay. Uh, so uh, what we now want to discuss is how you actually relax, how you stop the cardiomyocyte from contracting how you remove the calcium signal. Well, in fact, all you do need to do in order to cause the cardiomyocyte to relax is you just need to remove the calcium signal. If calcium goes back down, troponin C no longer is bound to calcium and will then change back to its original conformation and will pull the tropomyosin over uh, the myosin binding sites on the actin filaments. So the myosin filaments will stop interacting with the actin filaments and basically everything will just recoil to its original position, relaxing the cardiomyocyte back out. Once the myosin filaments are no longer interacting with the actin filaments, then everything just recoils back out. These Z discs move back out. Um, so all you have to do basically is to return tropomyosin to its original conformation where it's covering up the uh, myosin binding sites on the actin filaments. And you do that by removing the calcium. So how do you remove calcium? Well, once the action potential is gone, then you're no longer getting the calcium sparklets. So you're no longer getting the release of calcium from the endoplasmic ticum. So it seems logical that all you have to do is return the calcium back in to the endoplasmic reticulum, and indeed that is what you do. So there is a pump on the, oh whoops, I've been saying endoplasmic reticulum, I should say sarcoplasmic reticulum. There's a pump on the membrane of um, the endo sarcoplasmic reticulum, which is known as the circa pump, okay? Uh, so what does circa stand for? Circa stands for the sarco slash endoplasmic reticulum calcium ATPase. Sarco slash endoplasmic reticulum calcium ATPase. And basically, um, uh, circa, there are many different forms of the circa pump. And the specific type that is with that is on the uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum within the uh, cardiomyocytes is a form known as circa 2A. Okay, so sarco slash endoplasmic reticulum calcium ATPase. And specifically, the isoform of circa that is on cardiomyocytes is circa 2A. Okay, right. So, what does circa do? Well, basically, uh, if I draw a bigger picture of it, I'll draw it here. So here's the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum, or the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So here's circa in red here. Then what circa does is it basically moves two calciums back into the, ER, uh, the SR. So here are two calciums which are being moved back.
back into the lumen of the SR. So this is the SR lumen here, the sarcoplasmic reticulum lumen. And then it moves, f in exchange for those two calciums, it moves three protons out. Now, it also has to hydrolyze ATP in order to do this. So ATP is going to be hydrolyzed to ADP and inorganic phosphate. So to summarize then, when the action potential goes, the release of calcium from the ER or the SR is going to stop. What's going to then happen is the circuit 2A is going to start pumping the calcium back in to the sarcoplasma reticulum. That's going to mean that the calcium concentration goes down. Troponin C, therefore, is no longer going to be bound to calcium, and the troponin molecule is going to return to its original conformation. That's going to cause tropomyosin to return to its original conformation, in which it covers the myosin binding sites on the actin filament. The myosin filaments can no longer, therefore, interact with the actin filaments, and therefore everything just recoils under elastic recoil, effectively, and the um, cardiomyocyte relaxes back down. Okay, so that is cardiac muscle contraction.